Sam had uh, 25 free throws in the game. You guys had nine. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think was the reason for that? Do you think it was the officiating or a mix of maybe that and your aggressiveness? I think we have to be more aggressive. You know, we fouled them, um, and we didn't get to the free throw line enough. That starts with getting the ball inside and attacking, and they did play as a zone, so it's going to be you know, not the same opportunities as when they're manned, but we, we, that's the second game that we've had single digits in terms of free throw attempts, which means we're not being aggressive enough and getting the ball inside. Um, Coach, I was, uh, so, so I was talking to the players over there, and, and the thing that they said was kind of holding them back was throwing the first punch or the game thing started in the first quarter. Um, as a coach, how do you kind of address that? How do you, how do you go about fixing that? I think we just got to get back to being consistent. Uh, the last two games, I don't feel like we've had the same consistency in terms of playing four quarters where we, we were playing, um, and it showed up. I mean, I tell them all the time, you have to control the things you can control and not put it in somebody else's hands, and there were too many plays tonight, especially when we tied the game, that we put it in somebody else's hands to make decisions, and it affected, you know, whether it was, it was us not being aggressive, um, or hoping that we were going to get a call that we didn't get, whatever it was, we've got to go play Georgia basketball and, and be aggressive, and we just haven't really done that the last two games. And then uh, what was the message that, that uh, you had to the team coming back from a call that you got in this game? Just execution. I mean, I think, you know, after the Missouri game, you look at it on both ends, and Missouri's a really, really good team, but we didn't, we didn't execute. It's, we're going to make mistakes in a 40-minute game. Nobody's perfect, but our mistakes are lack of execution on both ends of the, of the basketball, and that's a lack of focus. Georgia had six offensive rebounds, while Texas a and had 16. I know that's a big part of ball session. Can you talk a little bit about what maybe the cause of that is and what you can do in the future to prevent that. Well, that's the game. I mean, rebounds is the game. Rebounds and free throws. You know, they've got great, excellent rebounders. We knew that going in. We talked about it for two days, and we let them loose on the boards and didn't get them boxed out. Um, Texas A&M is incredibly difficult to guard, especially Kennedy Carter. She leads the league in scoring and can score at all three levels. So the challenge is we're bringing help. So our post players are leaving their man to, to layer up under Kennedy, and then when the shot goes up, they've got to get back to their man to box out, or the guard who sat in the paint's got to box him out, and we just didn't do that consistently enough, and we let um, Indy and Sierra loose on the boards all night long and never never got it corrected. Coach, you uh, mentioned Carter for a and She had a big game 31 points, but it took her 28 shots to get there. Mm -hmm. Did that please you at all to see that? Still oh, I mean, it's she. She's capable of that every single night. So Kennedy Carter is who she is. She's an incredible player. She always takes a bunch of shots. If you look at her stat sheet, that's what she does. We know that about her. She's she takes double the shots of anybody else on the team. So then you can't give them a second shot, and that's where that's where the frustration is for me. It's not her 28 shots. It's not her 31 points. Hell, she could have had 50. Um, it's the fact that when she did miss, they had too many second chance opportunities at it. Um, so. As you're kind of back in the spot with back-to-back -back losses for the second time this year, but here you are in SEC play, uh, your players over here still seem confident that with the bye week they can get back into it, you know, and show who they were, say, against LSU or against Tennessee. Um, how do you kind of address it with your girls in terms of uh, how do we limit the season from spiraling? We're a long way from that, Brandon. I mean, there's a lot of basketball left to play. We, you know, we've, we've lost two games in a row to two really good teams. Um, that's not what we want at all, but we're going to bounce back and, and be ready to go. There's a lot of games left to play, and like I tell them all the time, you can't get too um, high, you can't get too low, and you can't get caught looking behind or looking ahead. And so our next challenge is to get better and get ready for an Alabama team on Sunday who plays really well. But we're have a, way too many games left to play to be thinking or talking about anything other than winning the next one we have. And does that also just kind of show the landscape of, uh, of this conference about just how, how deep it is from top to bottom? Absolutely. I mean, that's why you come here. That's why you play in the SEC and come to Georgia because every single night, you know, it's anybody's game. And, and then with uh, Jenna, I mean, after having – six minutes and five fouls the other night. I mean, to get her back in there, to yeah. see her kind of give you all a spark in the third, um, how how important was 
with that to maybe see her get past the, the frustration of not being able to contribute all, all that much to the other I think it was good for her and her confidence. I mean, Jen is a, a key player for us, and so it, it hurts us when she's not on the floor. So um, I'm glad that she was able to get out there and play tonight and get back to, you know, playing consistent minutes. And she did what she could on, on Thursday as well. Some of those fouls, you know, could have gone either way, and, and unfortunately it didn't go in, in our favor and in her favor. But um, you could tell when she showed up to practice on Friday, she was, you know, locked in. I think she understands that her being on the floor is important to our success. So I'm glad she was able to do that tonight. Time for one or two more. I'm Coach, they managed most of their offensive rebounds in the first half. What did you kind of tell them, your players, during halftime to, you know, game plan differently going into the second half? It wasn't a different game plan. We just did a better job of doing what the game plan was, which was to get back to them and box them out. Anything else? All right, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.